The first step when you receive the camera is to check everything inside the box. There is a plastic pocket which you'll find the supporting resources card if you have any questions about the camera, the mounting screws for connecting the mounting bracket, and the camera top. The waterproof need to protect the ethernet connector from extra water exposure, and a complementary lens cleaning cloth. Our menu is also inside the pocket and will be constantly updating. If you lose it, you can get an electronic copy from our website at www.samba.net. Note, the model inside the box is 405D20X PoE version, but you still see a complementary 12 DC power adapter in the box for testing purpose. This is to ensure in cases when your PoE adapter is defective or you are in an underpowered condition where the camera is not performing correctly, you can always connect the camera to this DC-12 adapter to test whether the problem goes with the camera or any accessories it is connected to. Removing the top lead, we see the camera in its mounting bracket. You need to connect those two later with the mounting screws in the plastic bag. And please be aware when you're trying to take the camera out of a box, please hold the camera top instead of pulling the wiring tails coming out of it. Now let's test the camera on the bench before mounting it outside. Note, this is very important to avoid any troubles in the future because once it is mounted, it is usually not easy to take down and if you're replacing bullet fixed camera to a PTZ, it is not recommended to adopt the old wiring due to different specs of the cameras. Regardless of whether it is PoE model or a non-PoE model, we will always test it first with our DC-12 adapter for the reasons stated in part 1. For PoE cameras, if there is any problems in the final connection with an injector or a PoE switch, testing it with the DC adapter would be a great reference for troubleshooting. First look at the spec of the adapter and make sure it is 12 DC. If you use more than 12 on the camera, the camera will die immediately. If the adapter is working properly, you should see solid green light and for the adapters of some other models, it will show solid red light as well. So let's get it connected to the camera. The camera will perform a self-test process and will rotate automatically when it receives power from the supplier. So if you don't see this process after it is powered up, you should contact the Sumba support team or test the camera with other adapters that are 12 DC. And then connect the LAN port of the router to the camera's RJ45 Ethernet port. The router also has a cable connected to the internet. Um, it's here's a great cable and the laptop is connecting to the router via wireless network. Now we will set up the camera using our laptop. After the camera is connected, We'll show you how to set up the camera in Windows 10. Our goal is to make sure the camera is on the same IP subnet as the router. First, let's go to Samba website and select download under the support tab. Then click the first item for software package and select any one of those web drives. When you open the web drive, please go to software and download the device manager tool. And this is the IP config tool. We'll skip the software installation step and teach how to use the software. 
First, click IP search and then the camera should show up with its pre-assigned default IP address 192.168.110. What we need to do is to modify the camera's gateway and IP address to ensure it is a part of the local network family. Now you may wonder how could you check the gateway of your local network or the gateway of your router. Here I'll show you two ways of checking that. Firstly, please right click the network icon on the lower right corner and open the network and sharing center. Select the change adapter setting option and you'll see all network adapters. Double click to open the network adapter that is connected and click details. Here you will see the current gateway of your network, which is 192.168.0.1. Now let's go back to the device manager tool and then change the gateway of the camera to the corresponding value of the local network that we just found, which is 192.168.0.1. And then the IP address of the camera must also be changed to 192.168.0.1. And the last element can be any integer between 2 and 255. However, keep in mind that if you have more than one IP cameras on your network, they should have different IP addresses. Otherwise, you have an IP conflict. After you made the changes, please click Modify to save all your works. Another way of checking the gateway just in case you are interested is in the command prompt and you can enter IP config and hit enter to get the current IP configuration info for your network. We see it returns the same gateway that we found previously. There is also a simple way of checking the gateway which is to check the back sticker of the router um, which will usually indicate the current IP of the router but uh, note this is a default value, so if someone um, has used this router and made some changes to it, uh, it may not be accurate. Also, uh, if you like to change the ports for your camera, um, please leave it later when you have access to the camera. Uh, we recommend that you make the changes on the camera's device config page uh, instead of in the device manager tool. So the next step is to access a camera using this current IP address 192.168.0.188. Please don't forget the HTTP prefix for the IP address. Um, and the current default HTTP port of the camera is 80. If you have changed the HTTP port of the camera to other values, you need to log in the camera with its IP and the HTTP port followed by that. This is the camera's web interface and we need to install the web plugin to view all the features. And we strongly recommend that you download the plugin either from our web drive under the IE Active folder. Or you can download it directly from our website under the download tab. And please ensure the web browser is closed during the installation. Now let's go back to the camera's web page. Remember you can select the language on the upper right corner.
The default username is admin and the password is empty. Now you will be prompted to select the stream type. If you choose mainstream, the image will be clear but requires more bandwidth. If you choose the substream, the image will be blurry uh, and it's usually only for remote access. Here we select the mainstream and uh, we see the video stream. Let's test the PTZ function. Now you can control everything in the Internet Explorer, but we would recommend you use VMS, which is our native client software and will be much convenient for controlling the camera. Here we will go over the steps of installing and set up VMS. Again, let's go to our web drive and download VMS for PC. For your convenience, here we will skip the installation process and VMS has a default username and password as admin. When we enter the software, please select Device Manager. The device in the network will appear automatically, otherwise you can just click the Search tab. Please select the device that was found on the network and choose Add so the camera will be added to the software. Here we are logging in using the default information of the camera uh, with its default password, default um, uh, ports. And in the future, if you change the camera's network information or password um, and the camera gets disconnected, you can always change its login information by clicking the, um, the, the Edit tab here to reconnect in the software. Now we see the device is connected, so Let's go back to the Home tab and choose Monitor. Please double click the device to connect. You can control the PTZ of the camera as well in VMS. Moreover, if you go to the Home tab and go to Device Config, you'll be redirected to set up other features of the camera. Okay, now we will be using the PoE Plus injector to power the camera. And since we have already tested the camera with its D412 adapter, we know the camera itself is working. And in the injector sticker, we see one port from the injector goes to the camera and the other side goes to the LAN network. Let's connect the injector to the router first. Now we can disconnect the DC power cable from the camera and connect the Ethernet of the camera to the PoE injector. The injector is expected to supply power to the camera. Now the camera should be powered and perform a self-diagnostic process. This proves the camera is functioning properly. You should also check the light on the router's LAN port and see whether it is green. If it is green, it means the network transfer from the router to the injector and from the injector to the camera is solid.